this video, I'm going to show how you can test normality and homogeneity of variance for a one-way ANOVA. And then if those assumptions or one of them are violated, how you can perform the appropriate non-parametric test. This fictitious data set consists of two variables. One is the categorical variable with three levels consisting of a control group, a group of schizophrenic individuals, and a group of bipolar individuals. And the score is the level of boredom score over the last seven days that these participants have endured. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start with testing the assumption of normality, which means that the means are distributed normally, so like a bell curve. So there's no direct way of doing this. What you've got to do is determine the residuals of the score and then plot those residuals in the histogram and then investigate whether that diagram assumes the shape of a normal distribution or not. So to do that, we're going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate, and we're going to have our score on the dependent variable because that is the dependent variable and we're going to have our categorical variable on the fixed factor so that is the control group the schizophrenic group and the bipolar group so what we got to do next is go to the optional the save box and then under residuals we're going to click on standardized and that's all we're going to do and then click continue and ok so what this will do it will will generate and save the residuals for each element in the data set and the next step would be to go to the chart builder clicking on the histogram, a simple histogram plot and then putting our standardized residuals on the x-axis and leaving the y-axis clean because we just want the count and then we'll click OK and here you can see our distribution of our residuals so how these deviate from the norm and it needs to show a bell curve or a relatively look-alike to a bell curve which is kind of like that and as you can see it is a bit skewed towards the right but overall and especially using ANOVA which is somewhat resistant to the assumption of normality being violated that would be a relatively acceptable normal distribution. So we can say with some level of confidence that normality has been assumed in this data set. So the next step would be to go to compare means one way ANOVA and here we're going to put our score in the dependent variable list and our factor, our, our categorical variable in the factor box. Don't We don't need to do anything more with the standardized residuals. They were primarily for the purpose of plotting the residual distribution to investigate normality. So the next step would be to investigate homogeneity of variance. And there are direct tests you can do for this. So there is the default homogeneity of variance test, which is Levine's test. And then there are the Brown Forsyth and the Walsh test. These last two can be considered as um, an upgrade of Levine's test almost with Walsh being the preferred one to use to determine homogeneity. So once you've got those there we can click continue and OK. So we can see here that the Levine statistic is significant, Walsh is significant and Brown Forsyth is significant. So what that tells us is that the null hypothesis that these tests are testing is, must be rejected and that null hypothesis is that these groups have homogeneity of variance between them. So essentially we're saying that that null hypothesis must be rejected and therefore these groups do not have homogeneity of variance. So in other words, significant result in these tests tells us that homogeneity of variance has been violated and thus we must proceed to a non-parametric test. So to do that we will then go to analyze non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, K independent samples because K is just a placeholder for the number of 
levels in your categorical group. So, so there's three possible tests that you could use as non-parametric alternatives to a one-way ANOVA. Kruskal Wallace H test, the median test, and the John Keir Terpstra test. Out of all three, the Kruskal Wallace H is the most commonly used and the most reputable under most circumstances. So that's the one we're going to be looking at. So here we would put our score, our boredom score, in the dependent variable test variable list and our outcome variable in the grouping variable list. Our range be defined as 1 to 3 because that's how our levels are coded. 1 being control, 2 being schizophrenic and 3 being bipolar. And you can do bootstrapping <coughs> if you want to but it's not really necessary. And you can also calculate the descriptives, quartiles and determine how you will treat your missing values. So like the Man whitney u test, the Kruskal wallace edge test ranks the data and then gets, calculates the mean of those ranks as opposed to the actual data scores themselves. So, and then we'll click OK. And here you can see the mean rank for each of those groups. Control's mean rank is 9.2, schizophrenic is 23.61, and higher rank in this case means a higher overall score that they achieved so controlled control group would have the least number least amount of boredom schizophrenic would have the most and bipolar would have be somewhere in between there and the Kruskal Wallace test gives us a chi square score which is our main statistic and as we can see the asymptotic significance level is 0 0.001 which is highly significant so overall this indicates that there is a significant difference between these groups and the most likely difference would be between the schizophrenic and the control. And that's all for this video. If this video helped you in any way or form, please give the video a like and even consider subscribing to the channel. It helps and stuff. Thanks.